Okay, welcome back. Another short COVID-19 tribute lecture. So we're finishing up on the topic of task analysis, moving to the topic of design. And first, some big picture thoughts about design. Here's a big picture, picture of a big city. This is Brasilia, the capital of Brazil in South America. What do you think? How does it look? Uh, it looks really kind of spread out. <laughs> it's very uh -huh. spread out. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a monumental city. It was designed to look good from the air, right? If you imagine yourself walking along those paths, I don't know if it would be so, such a great thing, but from the air, it looks beautiful. So the map, here's the map, the original design of Brasilia, and it kind of looks like a dragonfly. That was the concept. And here's the main axis, the monumental axis with the big church and the parliament and all the open space and all the huge buildings. The industrial zone was here. The airport was off, off to one side. These are housing. So you got a beautiful dragonfly with housing. And then the shopping areas were all around here with embassies and other things. All right. Very beautiful, very logical. So here I've got a quote for you. The plan is the generator. Without a plan, you have a lack of order and willfulness. The plan holds itself, holds in itself the essence of sensation. This is a quote actually on page 99 of your book. I'm sure you all read it, perhaps. I don't know, it's maybe skippable. Uh, what do you think? Any thoughts about this quote? Uh, I mean, if it was used to design that city, then mm -hmm. it doesn't seem all that great. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this was back in the 1930s and the 40s where like, you know, fascism was kind of a good thing. Like, it's about power, will to power, get everybody organized, get everybody on the same page, have a plan. You don't let people just do whatever they want. You need a plan for things. And Le Corbusier was the man who did the quote. He wasn't the architect of the city, but the architects of the city were very much along the same lines. We need a plan. We don't want people like living wherever they want and like building houses wherever they want and like subdivisions just going up. We want a grand plan, which makes sense, right? They thought about what does a city need to do? A city needs to have government. It needs to have housing. It needs to have industry. It needs to have an airport. And they separated everything very nicely. How do you think it would have feel to live in a city like that? Uh, it sounds terrible. <laughs> Why? Because it'd be so inconvenient it's incredibly inconvenient, right? So one of the principles of the city was pedestrian traffic and automobile traffic should be separated. So there's like sidewalks and roads. And if you're a pedestrian, you're on the sidewalks. If you're driving, you're on the road. But what if you want to pick up somebody? Or what if you want somebody to let you off and then walk to the sidewalk and you have to like find a hole through the fence? What if you're going to work? And on the way to work, you want to go to the bus stop and you want to buy a newspaper to read on the bus. You know, this was a few years ago. Except, nope, can't do that. The places that sell the newspapers, those are in the shopping zone, which is separate from the work zone, which is separate from the living zone. <clears throat> what if you want to walk home and do some yoga? Well, you can't do that because the yoga isn't right. So it was planned logically, top down, according to a plan, without thinking about human needs. In design, this is something you want to avoid. Another architect, Christopher Alexander, came up with a different quote. Um, he came a little bit later. This was the other guy was a Frenchman. This is an American, and uh, I don't know. Do you want to read that term for me? One of the people from the class. Yes, you please. We are searching for some kind of harmony between two intangibles, a form which we have not yet designed, and a context which we cannot properly describe. Great. Yes, and that's really the problem. So, when you do your task analysis, try to decide what system you want to build. Right. That context. You know, it's, it's hard to design that completely. The form which we cannot, have not yet designed. Right? This comes back to our little notion of the cycle. Remember we saw the cycle where you've got to design, implement, analyze, design, right? goes in circles forever. But these things don't go on forever. Eventually they converge. And very soon we'll be talking about prototyping, which is a way to find that harmony between the two intangibles, even when you don't have a full design, and even when you don't have a full understanding. Another topic, uh, not for this class, but when you take CS3331 and you learn about design patterns and software, they were also inspired by the work of Christopher Alexander. Okay, now you're all ready to take the quiz.